So I have a first name. I'm assuming you have a first name. Brian Scalabrini also has a first name. It's Brian. And like Scalabrini, other NBA players have first names as well. And we're going to be going down the list alphabetically uh, by first names to see who the best players at each letter are. So who's the best player starting with A in their first name? Who's the best player starting with B in their first name? So on and so forth. And then hopefully by the end of this we all learn something. Not like about the English language or, you know, the fact that Anthony Davis is really good. Spoiler alert. But more like, I don't know, something in life. And if you're wondering why I'm showing Brian Scalabrini, I mean, you might as well just show the best player of all time for an intro, right? Anyway, to start with A, I already gave it away. Anthony Davis. He's a beast on both sides of the floor. Athletically, he's... He can move like a guard, but he's a power forward. His face-up game has improved. Hopefully the New Orleans Pelicans can figure out how to start playing basketball for him. And by that I mean everyone outside of Drew Holiday. Because it's just not fun seeing star players on teams that are just not that good around him. But there's Anthony Davis for you. With B, it's Blake Griffin, who his athleticism has declined as he's gotten older because of the amount of injuries he's received. That being said, he'll still dunk on your head, and you can always go to YouTube and see him dunking on Timofey Mozgov, which is, like, the most disrespectful dunk ever. C is his teammate, Chris Paul, who is probably your grandfather's favorite point guard if your grandfather still watches the NBA. I'm pretty sure I made that joke before, but hey, you know what? It's still a decent one, or it's a terrible one. I don't know. Now, with Blake and the Clippers, are they good enough to actually contend at the top of the West? I don't know, the roster might not be uh, complete. DeMarcus Cousins' roster is nowhere near complete, as he needs to go for like 45 points as well as yelling at the referee and then being allowed to come back in the game for them to win games. But it's kind of working, and Sacramento might make the 8th seed this year, so shout out to Boogie. Now, Eric Bledsoe is an interesting player, because I feel like he's never gotten the opportunity to really show how good he is. He was the backup for Chris Paul on the Clippers, and... Then the Phoenix Suns signed a million point guards, and now the team's really young. I would love to see him on a team surrounded by guys ready to win right now. Now, the letter F was a huge competition between Festus Azili and Frank the Tank Kaminsky. Festus is injured, so I think that takes him out of it. As a result, Kaminsky's here, and this is probably the only time that he's going to get on the same list as, like, LeBron James, but, hey, you know what? Shout out to him. Now, Giannis is at G. For a split second, I gave this to Gordon Hayward, and then I realized that the second coming of... Well, the second coming of nothing, because what the hell is Giannis? There's never been anything like him in the NBA, so I look forward to the rest of his career. And then there is Hassan Whiteside of the Miami Heat, which both start with H, and no one would ever point that out except for me, because I like to make these things as weird as possible. He's 27 years old, and he's a super intimidating rim protector. But his team, the Miami Heat, does have a few things to figure out. One of them starts at the point guard position with Goran Dragic. Shout out to Isaiah Thomas for being the second best Isaiah Thomas in the history of the NBA. As well as probably my favorite player in the NBA, given that I am a Celtics fan. Does he deserve an all-star bid? Probably. He won't be a starter, but somewhere on the bench I could see it. James Harden at the J spot, which makes sense. It's crazy, man. You see a picture on Twitter of him wearing short shorts, and suddenly he averages 12 assists a game, so... Maybe NBA players should go back to smaller shorts. Now, the K spot was pretty damn tough between Kevin Durant, Kawhi Leonard, and, for the sake of it, Kyrie Irving, but ultimately, when you're a scoring freak who's made improvements on their all-around game, you gotta give it to Kevin Durant. And I think this is fitting for some reason is now it's LeBron James at L, and that's not surprising. But there's something to be said about LeBron and KD going back-to-back. Cavaliers, Warriors, rivalry. There might be something cool about that, or maybe there isn't, and I'm just trying to find a way to fill space. For M, it was between Marc Gasol and Mike Conley, who are both doing a great job with the Memphis Grizzlies carrying their offense. But Gasol, his low post ability, combined with his shooting from outside, as well as his passing and his defense, he's a very good center for them. Now, N was pretty tough between Nikola Jokic, Nicholas Batum, and Nerlens Noel. 
Batum shoots like 38% from the field, and Noel has not been given the opportunity to really take off, so I think Jokic kind of wins this one a little bit by default. Otto Porter might be the best Otto of all time. He's in a tough competition with Otto from The Simpsons, which was really funny for about seven or eight seasons, and I still have no idea why it's still going. Well, I do. It's because of money, but I don't know. Shout out to The Simpsons. Paul George at P. Paul Millsap gave him a run for his money, but I mean, you got to give it with PG-13. Also the best nickname in the NBA as well. I'm usually not a fan of the of the initials with the number, but in the case of PG-13, as well as AK-47, which was Andre Karolinko, it works out. And maybe CP-3, but that's about it. Like, Paul Pierce was PP-34. That sucks. Like, just stop wasting your time. Now, shout out to Quincy Pondexter for kind of winning this by default because it was between him as well as Quincy AC. And Pondexter is injured at the moment. But he has shown life as a three-point shooter, and he kind of saved the Pelicans a couple of seasons ago. R is triple-double machine Russell Westbrook. You know, the one thing I haven't noticed this year is TV people making fun of the Westbrook's clothes. Is he wearing normal clothes now, or am I just not watching TV? To be fair, I don't watch TV, because it's 2016 and what the hell, but... I don't know. Someone let me know. Is he still getting made fun of for his clothes? Now we have Steph Curry has declined a little bit this season. To be fair, Steph Curry declining a bit still makes him like the 7th or 8th best player in the NBA. And the basketball nerd in me is happy because he says he wants to get involved in more pick and roll plays at the end of Golden State games, which they really need to do, which means he's also going to have to deal with Tristan Thompson, who has shown a decent enough ability of defending him on the pick and rolls, and he is the T spot because... I mean, what he does for the Cavaliers in terms of rebounding and defense, it's all good stuff. He barely beats out Tobias Harris, and now Udonis Haslam, shout out to him for hanging around. No one's name starts with you. I had to give it to somebody. He's always been a defender, a rebounder, and a leader for the Miami Heat. And then there's Victor Oladipo, who came over from Orlando, goes over to OKC, and is enjoying the benefits of Russell Westbrook as his three-point shot is through the roof. But he's also a nice defender, as well as a guy who can create his own shot, as well as create shots for others as well. Shout out to Victor. Wilson Chandler was injured last season. He's come back in full force this year, having the best year of his career. Being productive from everywhere, and I'm still waiting for some veteran team to trade for him. The Clippers would love to have him. Now for X, I have to give you Xavier Henry, who's not even in the NBA right now, but I need something to fill this space up. I'm surprised with the name of Xavier that we haven't had any more NBA players. I don't know, man. Also, these last couple letters are all weird because there's no X, there's also no Y. So shout out to Yao Ming, who could have been one of the best centers of all time if he did not have a foot injury. It's too bad, and it's also too bad that he and Tracy McGrady could never stay healthy long enough because that Rockets team with those two probably was a title contender. But unfortunately, they just couldn't stay on the floor. Zach Levine at Z, and I think we're done here. Levine's super athletic, but his ability to create his own shot as well as score on the pick and roll has improved, and he seems like a real NBA player. So there you are. Um, if you don't know the alphabet, which I'm assuming you do, but if you didn't, this video might have been confusing to you. And also, if you're ever feeling down, just go on YouTube, which is the site you're on right now, and go look up some Brian Scalabrini highlights so he can show off what he could have been if NBA coaches were not afraid to play him more than five minutes a game because it would have been unfair to the other team. There's no doubt.